and welcome to the Google for Startups Accelerator for Women Founders Virtual Demo Day. My name is Jason Scott and I'm the head of Google's startup developer ecosystem here in the US. And I'm Ashley Francisco and I lead our startup developer ecosystem initiatives across Canada. In June of this year, we announced the Google for Startups Accelerator for Women Founders, Google's first North American accelerator initiative and our first accelerator dedicated to women founders. We know that women founders are disadvantaged in comparison to their male counterparts when it comes to access to capital and to programming. And our goal is to help level that playing field. And after 10 weeks, we've made it to the end of our first program. It's been quite the journey for our founders as they've tackled product design and UX, technical infrastructure, data and machine learning, growth marketing, expansion and sales, and of course, people and leadership. And as you can imagine, it's been a busy 10 weeks. In a moment, we will allow each of our 12 founders the opportunity to tell you more about their amazing teams and amazing company. So with that, let's get started. As a reminder, each founder will be given about five minutes to present their company, and we'll have time for one question as well. First up, it's my pleasure to introduce Coconut Software, based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Coconut Software provides customer engagement solutions that modernize how banks and credit unions engage. Have you ever tried to book an appointment with your bank, or for that matter, an expert at any enterprise? At first, you don't think it will be painful, and you don't think it'll be that bad, but then indeed, you probably feel like Ricky Bobby jamming that knife into his leg, and it's excruciatingly painful my name is Catherine Renier, and I'm the CEO and president of Coconut Software, and I'm excited to share a bit more about my company with you. We are an enterprise SaaS-based company based out of Canada, and we specialize in the customer engagement software space for the financial services industry. We have top-tier customers such as Jackson Hewitt, Royal Bank of Canada, Capital One, Van City, and Arvis Bank, just to name a few. To date, we have raised 11.4 million, and since our last round in November of 2019, which is 6.4 million of that, we have been able to triple our ARR with an extremely low burn. Below, you will see a list of our current product offerings, which highlights some of our most successful product lines from appointment scheduling to lobby management. But as we continue to move forward, we are very focused on engineering additional product lines that creates a more on-demand and real-time customer experience. Although we pertain to many different financial services divisions, our go-to-market strategy is diving deep into the banking and credit union space, as it's a complete arms race right now. And with that being our focus, we've been able to triple the number of our US customers in 2020. That means in the last 12 months, we've captured 1% of the US market and over the past few years, we've captured over 12% of the Canadian market. Our business model is selling annual user-based licenses that are usually in the form of three-year contracts. We increase our ARR through additional seats, additional product offerings, and through launching into other business lines within that enterprise. Our expansion rate year-to-date has been 32%, and our net dollar retention is 127%. Coconut is the only one who solely focuses on financial institutions. We have built deep domain expertise, which allows us to help the challenges that banks, credit unions, wealth management, and tax preparation corporations face today. Our competition that you see listed here focuses on all business types, which can include SMBs, and they're really focused on the basics of transactional scheduling. We focus on relationship building between a customer and an expert, and then provide that data and insights around those engagements. Our team is so fortunate to work with top tier investors and a super impressive advisory board. I won't go through them all, but to highlight a few, we have Joe Payne and Don Clark who sold Eloqua for 1 billion. We have Michelle Zatlin, powerhouse COO at Cloudflare, which has a market cap of 20 billion, 
And most recently, I'm sure you've heard of Verifin, who just sold for 2.75 to NASDAQ. And we're happy to have Brian Hartland and Dave Unsworth, who are part of that journey, help guide us in our next chapter of Coconut. Our team has been driving 100% year-over-year growth for the last four years, and we will be landing at $5 million in ARR this year. Next year, we're projected to double again, and we definitely have the demand in the pipeline to hit that target of $10 million. At this time, we don't have a round open, but I'm dedicating these next 12 months to find the right investors and begin building relationships so that when we do win our round, it will be a no-brainer for us to work together. I then can prove to you that I can set out and accomplish what I said I was going to do. I'd like to thank you for your time and thank you Google Accelerator for this tremendous opportunity. You can find me, Catherine Renier, on LinkedIn and thank you for listening. Thanks, Catherine. A question from one of our registrants. What makes you different from the competition that you're up against? I think that's a fabulous question and we get asked that um, often. So I think there's really three points that make us different. One. We were originally engineered to support enterprises. We weren't on the SMB market and then moving up to enterprise. Our system is actually supporting it, the infrastructure of enterprise, which is a lot different than your hair salon down the street. The second point is our domain expertise, which I talked about. Even though our platform can go um, to different verticals, we've really focused in on the financial services piece. And I think being able to understand their problems is allowing us to build a more superior product, which really um, supports the third item, which is in the past year, we've ripped and replaced um, many of our competitors. In fact, 35% of the deals we won were rip and replaces. So I think that's just not me saying we have a superior product. That's our customers who tried some of our competitors and said, no, we need something that's built more for us and for the enterprise. And I think that's why Coconut's gonna win and we're gonna win big time at that. Thank you to Catherine and the Coconut Software team. Up next, we'll be hearing from COI Energy based in Tampa, Florida, and they aim to eliminate energy waste in buildings to optimize the electric grid, creating a climate-friendly economy. Hi, my name is Salisa Barian and I am the founder and CEO of COI Energy. We are solving one of the biggest challenges that's negatively impacting our climate, and that's energy inefficiency. To date, we have over 150 users on our platform that we are assisting with driving efficiency in their buildings, and we've also signed two electric utilities. With this energy inefficiency, utilities have recognized that they need to activate more demand side management or what they call um, build energy in buildings in order to help balance the grid. And so to date they have 10% of activation of resources behind the meter and it took them 20 years to get there. They're looking to get to 35% in the next five years. And what we know is that something must change in order to achieve those goals by 2025. COI Energy, we are the solution. We're a digital energy platform that helps utilities and businesses monitor, manage, and monetize energy waste in buildings to drive efficiency and reduce carbon emissions. And how we do this is that every single building, we put our hardware gateway um, at each building to pull their real-time energy information along with the asset registry where we have every single um, piece of energy equipment that we upload onto our platform. And then we apply our secret sauce to that in order to make this have this big impact um, within these buildings. And they're able to control their energy use just from the palm of their hands, or they can enable us to do that for them. So the customer, they have this dashboard that shows them the KPIs that are most important to them, how much energy they're saving, uh, what assets are driving that, and then how they are reducing their carbon footprints. During our time at Google, we focused on the artificial intelligence and machine learning features in our platform to drive more value for our customer, reducing their time and increasing their saving opportunity. And the first um, technology we were working with was Google's imaging um, technology in order for us to upload assets in a fast and simple way and customers now can save their time, and then utilities can actually see it on the map where these assets are located. 
The other technology we worked on was from a machine learning perspective was a demand management where our customers were able to set thresholds and say they don't want their demand to exceed this amount. You can see on the chart where they, they we cut the peak and then here they have the peak shaving where we were able to save them. So when you look at the competitive landscape, what you will see is our competitors, they do demand management and grid impact similarly um, to us, but we outpace them with our demand management platform. And the reason why is number one, we have a six month payback period from the time a customer gets on our platform, they're able to return on their value within six months. We give them that real time control to prevent energy waste, as you saw on the previous slide, where we're really cutting that energy waste down and we're giving them control at the, in the palm of their hands to do that. And then the bigger piece is this environmental and social impact. For every business that comes on our platform, we're able to turn that energy waste into value to those communities that are most negatively impacted by climate change. So we are gifting energy to those communities. This is all done with a simple business model. Customers pay a one-time activation fee and a monthly subscription based on the level of service that they look, wish to receive from us. This is a huge market. Globally, it's a $92 billion total addressable market. In North America, it's at 18 billion. And for COI, the slice of customers that we're looking at, it's a $5 billion total, total addressable market. Our financial projections over the next year shows us going from currently we're at 200 meters up to 5,700 meters, which will yield us over $45 million in revenue. We are the team to bring this solution to the market. We have over 50 years of combined experience. Vinny worked with me at my first startup and he was a product owner at that startup. He has over 10 years experience working with us now as a chief product officer. Prakash, we brought him on when we were looking at value engineering and pricing. He has over 15 years of experience of doing that on a national and international level. And then myself, I've been working in the energy industry for over 25 years with 10 years of experience working at the utilities and 15 years working in a smart grid space at four different startups. We have an amazing advisory team with over 70 years of combined experience in business, energy, and technology. With that, we are announcing that we are raising $4 million um, in order for us to grow and scale the company. And so we're looking for companies that are interested in helping us create a climate-friendly economy for our children's children to live, work, play, and thrive. Thank you. Please join us on this journey. Thanks so much, Salisa. One question for you from the audience. What makes CY Energy different? And how is your technology driving more value than what other competitors are? So what really makes us different is that we are not only giving customers real-time energy information, we're giving, giving them insights and control. So the biggest piece that's missing in the equation when you look at energy efficiency is you can tell customers as much as you want about you need to do this, but if you don't have the controls in place, not much happens. So we provide that control at the same time as the insights and they can automate the control from the palm of their hands or they can allow us to automate it for them where we take control of their devices to make those shifts in order to eliminate the energy waste in those buildings, driving a whole lot of savings and reducing carbon footprint. Now I'm thrilled to introduce Lola Hong from Cultivate People, an Arlington, Virginia based startup that provides global market compensation data and helps companies make data-driven pay decisions so they can eliminate pay gaps. I'm Lola Han, the CEO and founder of Cultivate People. I'm the former head of compensation at companies like Zendesk. Because of roles like this and helping over 200 global companies as a compensation consultant, I realized how complex it is to administer compensation. You have to gather and analyze lots of market data, create spreadsheets with fancy formulas like this, and then distribute them to leaders to gather proposed salary increases and promotions. It takes several months to get various data points in one place to be able to give to managers so that they can make the best pay decisions. It's not that companies don't wanna pay fairly, there just isn't an effective tool. That's why Cultivate People created CAMSA, 
Kamsa means appreciation in Korean. It's a SaaS-based solution that automates compensation administration so companies can pay their employees competitively four times faster than traditional ways. Unlike other HR systems, it provides real-time global market compensation data so companies can see how their employees compare to market. Our sweet spot are companies with less than 1,000 employees, and our target market is typically heads of people or HR. Companies benefit from Comsa because it allows them to attract and retain their most valuable assets, their people. And managers can share with employees their total compensation package and clearly communicate growth opportunities. The current compensation solutions on the market are built with a single approach. There are tech-enabled platforms like salary.com, which provides crowdsourced compensation data, but when data is self-reported from the public, it's just not reliable. Then there are traditional salary surveys like Radford, which provides market data from actual employee salaries, but they lack data from newer jobs in the market, like machine learning engineers. Both kinds of solutions result in lots of time wasted because you have to manually map each company job title to the titles in their database to be able to accurately market price each job. Kamsa is a hybrid solution using machine learning to match your employees' jobs against our proprietary market database, which allows companies to simplify and expedite paying employees fairly. Features like our compensation review remove the heavy lifting of administrative burden that HR and finance typically face by automating their routine compensation processes. What also makes us unique is that we pair our technology with free consulting services from our compensation experts, which allows for a holistic approach. Our team brings years of experience from companies like Payscale, PayFactors, and CareerBuilder. We're growing fast and hiring our first data scientists so we can look more deeply at pay trends and share them with our customers. We've also partnered with many VCs, including Insight Partners and First Round, to help their portfolio companies with their compensation needs. Cultivate People has been a trusted partner for over 200 global companies, and we've used the learnings of their pain points to develop and launch the scalable software. We've launched Comsa a few months ago and onboarded current as well as new clients. Almost 100% of our clients come from referrals or word of mouth. We're on track to almost double last year's revenue this year. And thanks to help from Google, we're launching our first marketing campaign and plan to at least double this year's revenue next year. We're so excited that Comsa will be helping many more companies pay their employees fairly, painlessly. Thanks, Lola. Our audience would love to know, how does your product differ from competitors like Options Impact or Redford, and how does your product actually help companies pay employees fairly? How our product differs from our competitors like Radford and Option Impact is that it's a hybrid solution combining both global market compensation data for cash and equity, as well as helps the companies administer compensation review seamlessly. Congrats to the Cultivate People team. Up next, we have Navia from Curie AI to tell us about how they are transforming care for respiratory illnesses like asthma and COPD through AI-based models that help physicians understand respiratory health, disease progression, and treatment effectiveness. Hello, everyone. I'm Navia Dabaluri, co-founder and CEO of Curie. Curie is a healthcare startup that is enabling proactive and personalized care for patients with respiratory and cardiovascular conditions. Over a billion people worldwide suffer from chronic respiratory and cardiovascular conditions. These conditions result in millions of deaths, hospitalizations, and emergency department visits every year. However, a majority of these adverse events are completely preventable. Experts in respiratory care have identified that the biggest drawback in current standard of care is that there are no tools available for daily monitoring and early detection of disease deterioration in these patients. Curie develops unique technology and tools for monitoring daily resp respiratory distress experienced by patients and helps physicians provide proactive and personalized care. 
Curing solution has several components, but at a high level, it provides two functionalities. First functionality allows for daily monitoring of patients through a transformative AI technology for assessment of respiratory distress along with standard vitals monitoring. The second part of the solution draws powerful actionable insights from daily monitoring data that help physicians in making proactive treatment decisions. Let's look at each of these two functionalities in a bit more detail. Curie has developed a new fifth vital sign for respiratory distress. It is measured from passive monitoring of ambient audio coming through a device placed at the bedside next to the patient as shown in the picture. The AI does continuous inference of data through the monitoring duration, typically overnight monitoring, and gives an objective assessment of respiratory distress along 18 dimensions. This provides rich information on if the patient has any shortness of breath, audible wheeze, or type of cough, uh, and a variety of other symptoms. The second functionality of Curie Solution combines the fifth vital sign data along with standard vitals measurement in order to extract powerful insights such as disease deterioration, treatment effectiveness, etc. These insights are shared with physicians on a daily basis through tools such as email reports, web-based notifications, web-based dashboard, et cetera. Curie is currently working with several provider networks and health systems that provide care under value-based models with incentives for improved patient outcomes. Curie has shown strong clinical outcomes on hundreds of patients so far in a variety of settings, including inpatient care, post-acute care, and in chronic care management. For example, in a recent deployment in Arizona at a COVID facility, Curie has shown 60% reduction in mortality rate, and on average, at least two days of reduction in length of stay. We have also shown up to 90% reduction in readmissions in post-acute care settings. One of the key aspects contributing to these outcomes is our proprietary technology for the assessment of respiratory distress, enabling early detection of deterioration in the condition two to four days in advance compared to the standard vitals measurement alone. The clinical outcomes directly translate to significant cost savings and improved economic outcomes as well. We have shown greater than 10 is to 1 ROI in all of our deployments and are on track to monitoring thousands of patients in the next 12 to 15 months. Our vision is to fundamentally transform the existing standard of care for proactive interventions and personalized care. We are striving towards the future where chronic or acute respiratory conditions and heart failure would no longer be the leading cause of death by disease nor would they result in a substantially high number of hospitalizations. Thank you. Congratulations, Navia. One question from the audience. You mentioned developing technology for a fifth vital sign. Can you elaborate on what this means and the implications? The AI we have developed for a fifth vital sign is truly first of its kind. A substantial effort went into developing the technology, close to seven years in research and development. The AI is trained on proprietary data set we've been putting together for several years. Today, the data set contains more than a million hours of audio collected on thousands of patients that experience respiratory distress. The data set is unique, and we likely have one of the largest data sets for COVID-19. Over time, we have also built significant IP on the technology. Next, I'm happy to introduce Georgine from Fairy Godboss, based in New York to tell us about her career community for women that provides free resources like career connections, job listings, virtual recruiting events, community advice, and the hard to find information about how companies treat women. My name is Georgine Huang and I'm obsessed with women's careers. I live in New York and before I started Fairy Godboss, I used to have a big corporate job running a global PML. One day, I walked into work and found out that my boss, the CEO, had been fired. As part of this management shakeup, I was fired too. But unlike my boss, I was two months pregnant at the time. 
And that's when the reality of being a woman in the workplace really hit me. Our company is trying to close the economic gender gap in our lifetime. The World Economic Forum says it will take more than 250 years. Our leadership team is committed to shortening the predicted four generations it will take because we're a group of men and women, parents and non-parents who've worked at large companies and small startups. We've seen the difference that inclusive and diverse workplaces make in our own lives and we want to see that everywhere. In September, almost 1 million women dropped out of the workforce, 10 times the number of men, in part because of caretaking and homeschooling responsibilities. But the truth is women always had less reason to stay in their jobs in the first place. We are half the workforce. There are 70 million of us, but our jobs come with less money and less power. In fact, there were more men named Jeffrey with top CEO jobs than all women CEOs last year. And the year before that, it was men named John. But we're at an inflection point in solving this problem. We think that women coming together to support each other is what makes all the difference. Or as we say, collusion is the solution. When I was job searching or pregnant, I wanted to find things out like, did a company have a maternity leave policy? Were there women in management roles? Were they expecting FaceTime of me? Our community shares this kind of intel with each other through posts on our feed and through anonymous job reviews. And women are realizing that getting together is a win-win. We've grown our monthly active users organically and have over 1 million visitors to our platform every month. This makes us the largest dedicated career platform for women. Employers get it too. CEOs understand they have a role to play. And even in a pandemic labor market, 80% of talent acquisition leaders are investing in hiring and attracting more diverse talent. Companies are living in a world of stakeholder capitalism. Investors, employees, and customers are all paying attention to what they do. And this is particularly true for millennials and Generation Z. Our customers know this. They're the world's largest and best respected brands in every industry. They buy Fairy God Boss because of what aligning with our brand stands for and because we deliver a pipeline of qualified women to consider and apply for their open roles. We deliver talent leads, job applicants, and ultimately help them hire more women. We do this through an annual SaaS program of job listings, a branded employer profile, and machine learning matching of users with companies and jobs. Our business model is very similar to our competitors, but we are also very different from them, which is why these companies are either our current customers or our very interested prospects. We believe that in a few years, we will be a $100 million revenue business. We have a very large addressable market of 10,000 US companies with over 1,000 employees. They all need a better brand and, ex and an expert channel partner in Fairy Godboss to attract women employees. It's pretty easy to find us. We have a fun name despite a serious mission. So come learn more and thank you for listening. Awesome job, Georgine. A question to you from one of our registrants. Why do your customers decide to buy Fairy Godboss when there are many comparable behemoths out there like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed? And how do you differentiate yourself? LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and Indeed are amazing and very large companies. Together, they generate $9 billion worth of revenue. Only about 1% of talent acquisition budgets today go to diversity hiring. We at Fairy God Boss exist alongside those companies. Companies buy us and Indeed and LinkedIn and Glassdoor because they recognize that women job seekers consider and behave in different ways than men job seekers. Women tend to underapply, feeling that they must meet all the listed requirements of a job before applying. And they also tend to sell themselves short as passive candidates on LinkedIn, where they highlight fewer accomplishments. They're less apt to brag. So companies buy us because they recognize these differences and want a dedicated partner that really understands how to motivate and convince a woman to consider a new role. 
Thanks so much, Georgine. Up next, I'm thrilled to introduce Julie McDonald from Heirloom, a Hamilton, Ontario, Canada-based company that aims to make trademark registration as easy and accessible as domain registration by providing the first self-serve application platform. Over to you, Julie. I'm Julie McDonald. I'm a senior level trademark lawyer turned tech founder. Our company is called Heirloom and we've democratized the trademark registration process. Trademark registration is really the only way to own a brand. You can't even legally own your website domain without trademarking it. But the process is complicated and you really need an expert to get it right. This friction of having to work slowly with expensive lawyers leaves hundreds of thousands of small and medium sized businesses unprotected. And failing to protect company trademarks can all too often mean failure for a business. In fact, 85% of all businesses experience trademark infringement and more than half of them are forced to close or rebrand. Trademark issues affect all businesses worldwide, from small and medium-sized businesses to large enterprises. It's a multi-billion dollar problem and Heirloom solves it. Our machine learning enabled platform empowers business owners to search and file their own trademarks. They do it quickly, they do it affordably. Most important to us is that they do it to an actual professional standard. For as little as $99, heirloom users access two technologies, an instant professional trademark search tool and an error-proof trademark application builder. Since launching in Canada, we've had impressive month-over-month -month growth, reaching over 55,000 in monthly revenue. In the eight months since we launched our MVP, we've partnered with RBC Ventures, to offer trademarking alongside their business registration and corporation platform called Owner. We are in discussions with the Canadian government because our tools would clean up the trademark applications being submitted to it. We've got ClearBank fueling our marketing and we've been accepted into several top tier accelerators, Google for Startups, Canadian Technology Accelerator Silicon Valley and the Accelerator Center. Beyond our US launch, there are so many ways to grow this opportunity. We see huge potential through strategic partnerships. Heirloom would be a valuable add-on for domain registration and e-commerce partners such as GoDaddy, Amazon, and Shopify. Large enterprise clients would see value in our technology, putting trademark search and application tools into the hands of their existing in-house legal and marketing teams would eliminate the need for expensive external lawyers. We've also built our technology to be compliant with international standards, giving us 193 potential expansion markets. We have impressive mm -hmm. traction, we have a big opportunity and many ways to grow it. But the best thing we have is an incredible team with 30 plus years of domain knowledge, and an actual government trademarks examiner managing our legal operations, we couldn't be better suited to solve this problem. I always say we're a unicorn, not because of our revenue, although I think we could get there, but because we're one of the rare startups with a female CTO. Her name is Sarah Rue. Sarah and her support team offer substantial technology expertise. Diversity and inclusion are core to our company culture and core to us as Canadian founders. With a female CEO and CTO and the level of commitment to diversity we've made, we've stacked the odds against ourselves in terms of funding. The support we've accessed through this first Google for Startups Women Founders Accelerator has been transformative. Thank you, Google, for believing in us. In addition to our incredible team, we have an incredible group of advisors with backgrounds with Shopify, Facebook, Google, and Stanford University. Dan Evely built Shopify's partner program from the ground up, and here's what he has to say. What's exciting about Heirloom is that just like with Shopify, there's no ceiling to the market and the partnership opportunities are endless. In terms of our ask today, we're seeking 2 million for 18 months of runway. We'll be using it primarily to fuel our growth in the US. Thank you so much. 
Julie, our audience would love to know more about who you sell your solution to. Who's your customer? I really love this question because it goes to the passion that we have for this business. And that's truly serving small and medium-sized business owners in the most ethical business model we can think of. It's direct to consumer, single transaction. Again, 85% of brands experience infringement and over half of them are forced to close or rebrand. I can't tell you how many small and medium-sized business owners I've had cry with me on the phone in my traditional law practice because they've lost everything overnight. They truly deserve a better way to protect their brand and their business. And we feel we can offer that. And we feel we should offer that. I think COVID has, COVID has shown us that these small and medium-sized businesses make up the vast majority of our economy and really are the lifeblood of that economy. Where we do see potential for recurring revenue is with a SaaS model of our product offered to large enterprise clients. So we're direct to consumer, single transaction, very deliberate, del deliberately as a passion for small and medium-sized businesses, and we're SaaS recurring revenue for large enterprise who can afford to pay for it. Thank you to the Heirloom team. And with that, we've reached the halfway point of today's program. Before we dive into the second half, let's take a quick look back at the journey our founders have been on over the last 10 weeks. Welcome. We're really excited. Um, it really has been a long time coming. I think the amount of, <laughs> it's crazy how much prep work goes in and then all of a sudden it's, it's here and the day is here. This has been a long time coming. So we're very excited to, as Jason said, put some names to faces um, and really uh, kick off this program. We give them a digital way to connect with their customers through appointment scheduling and, and lobby management. We aim to eradicate um, eradicate energy waste in buildings in order to optimize the electric grid. We have our own global market compensation data that companies can use to make uh, data-driven pay decisions to close pay gaps. We aim to uh, essentially really uh, redefine the standard of care for people with uh, um, chronic respiratory conditions and, um, and cardiovascular conditions. We aim to improve the lives and workplaces for women. We aim to make uh, trademark registration as accessible as domain registration. We aim to empower digital storytellers, entertainers, and educators with online creative tools that are highly accessible. We aim to recycle for reuse all water used in the growing and production of protein. We aim to help life science companies, so biopharma and agriculture companies, to develop a more efficient and personalized medicine and agriculture. We aim to strengthen schools and school districts by giving them easy access to family and staff feedback. We solve a $1 trillion problem in the consumer packaged goods industry due to out of stocks and waste. We aim to end sleepless nights with, uh, for those that snore or have mild OSA. You can see that we'll focus on technical enablement first and foremost. We'll dive deep into product road mapping, design UX, infrastructure, AI, ML, and more. From there, we continue into growth, sales strategy, people, leadership, and we have some amazing speakers and Google experts lined up to support. Of course, you're engaging with your dedicated mentors quite often, but know who else we have for our dedicated mentors across the team, because a lot of them have pairs of expertise that you can lean in on and, and feel free to reach out anytime because they are here to help. My area of research is really interested in how do we train models beyond test accuracies? I, I focus on a, a few different areas of mostly fundamental uh, machine learning research. My team is responsible innovation and so we add operations behind the AI principles. So we turn them into practices that can be followed by uh, Googlers across the world no matter what role or function that they have. Today we're going to be talking about what I would say, I think you said a whiteboard story, and that's actually what the, the slide says, a whiteboard story. Um, and, and the talk is titled, Taking Your MVP to the Next Level. But we're gonna do a little bit of kinetics so that we can retain and be able to say and use our physical motion to be able to, again, retain much more of the process. You're also joining a 
quite a large community. Sherry kind of alluded to it, um, not just with our Women Founders community, but our Accelerator alumni community. I just wanted to send a huge congratulations to each of you entrepreneurs for taking a concept or idea and pursuing it to its fullest. I wish you the best of luck on Demo Day and on behalf of all of us here at GV and across the Alphabet family, once again, good luck now and in years to come. Hi everybody, I wanted to take the opportunity to congratulate the first cohort of the Google for Startups Accelerators for Women Founders. We know that women are going to play a key, integral part of our economic recovery here in Canada, and I know how resilient all of the entrepreneurs are in this country. I want to take a moment to thank you for participating and wish you the best of luck. Even with all the challenges, we were able to launch a set of new accelerators across Americas including, of course, the inaugural class of our Women Founders Accelerator. It was so great meeting with all of you and just want to share my congratulations. I know you will all be super successful and wishing you the very best. Congratulations and good luck to each of you and your companies on this journey. Congratulations and good luck to each of you and your companies on your journey. Congratulations! congratulations. <laughs>
This volume speaks for itself, but Kapwing's brand is also growing in the creator verse. Celebrities, influencers, and marketers have recommended Kapwing on every platform. In October, PewDiePie, the second biggest YouTuber, gave Kapwing an organic shout out on his channel. And we're also making money. Um, right now, all of our revenue is self-serve from individuals, a $20 a month premium plan. But we plan to go to market with a B2B license to empower creative companies in 2021. My co-founder and I were both product managers at Google. So we bring that focus on product and end user experience to the team that we've built. Now we have a team of 20 and the company is led by engineering and product. We've raised more than $12 million to date and we're backed by the world's leading firms. We're not taking investor meetings right now, but we will likely raise a series B in 2021. So reach out then if you're interested. Yeah, thank you so much. Our roots come from Calvin and Hobbes. We believe in having fun and also um, we believe in having fun and also creating uh, multimedia projects that are awesome. So if you also believe in creators and want to join us, uh, please reach out. Thank you, Julia. And we have time for one question from our audience. What is your long term product vision for Kapwing? Yeah, we want Kapwing to empower creative companies and institutions of the future. So we will have a B2B license that allows creative companies to purchase Kapwing Pro to empower their whole workforce. And Kapwing will have its web tools and also iOS and Android apps that serve all sorts of modern creative use cases for images, videos, and GIFs. Um, and uh, because editing is now in the cloud, we can also serve as a platform for distribution and for collaboration for media teams who are, um, you know, creating assets and then sharing them across platforms and who are creating assets using, um, you know, many other assets that, that they have used in the past. So that is our vision for Kapwing. Thanks, Julia. Up next, we'll be hearing from Karen, the founder of Livestock Water Recycling, a Calgary, Alberta-based ag tech company who uses machine learning to digitize waste outputs for food producers, allowing reduced expenses and environmental impact. Only 4% of the world's water is recycled for reuse. And at LWR, we are changing that statistic by extracting water from a surprising and long overlooked resource, livestock manure. Globally, livestock manure is archaically stored in massive lagoons for eventual land spreading. When manure is stored in open lagoons, greenhouse gases are created and emitted, runoff from lagoons can end up in waterways, and farms are leaving money on the table. Ready for a stat that will blow your mind? A dairy farm with 2,500 cows produces as much liquid waste as a city with 411,000 people. Can you imagine that city without water treatment? Plus it can cost that individual dairy farmer up to $700,000 per year to manage and apply this manure. Our technology modernizes the old fashioned and expensive practice helping food producers eliminate the stress and expense. Most manure lagoons actually only contain 5% manure. The rest, if you can believe it, is water. Coming from a previous water tech commercialization, my co-founder and I immediately saw this as a water treatment market that was vastly underserviced. We developed and patented a system to be installed on farm to receive manure before it ever gets to a lagoon. We process, treat, and digitize the manure in a way that has never been done before, taking 75% of this manure to clean potable water right on the farm. We introduced version three of our technology platform this year that features the highest level of automation and digitization available. We manufacture the system in five standard models that can be interconnected to serve differing farm sizes. Sensors on the system capture manure data, combine it with data from the surrounding environment and the herd, and using our algorithms, adjust the systems in response. This reduces operator time by relying on automation, and we use the power of machine learning to create the best possible economics for the farm. The data is communicated to our cloud-based analytics module, available on, in real time on our My Plant app dashboard, allowing farmers to make informed decisions about their manure, to use it for crop nutrients, sell it for carbon credits, or sell it as fertilizer off farm. So how does this unique system create value on the farm? 
Let's look at Jay, one of our favorite farmers. He started with an initial equipment purchase on his farm that immediately reduced his manure volume, eliminated his lagoon, and then reduced his manure management and hauling cost. By isolating his fertilizers for precision application, he saw massive growth of his feed crops, which is the single highest expense for a livestock farm. He expanded his production by doubling his herd size on the same amount of land, and he quickly began to see improvements in his overall herd health. He has created a brand new revenue stream for his dairy by selling manure off farm, and he calls himself an entrepreneur now. With installations across nine states and into the Middle East, we are seeing interest increasing from nearly every corner of the globe. We are raising a Series A round of $6 million to scale our proven technology. Our markets are the animal protein supply chain, dairy, pork, and beef pro producers, plus meat processing facilities who are looking to reduce their biosecurity risk. We have had consistent years of revenue and seeing huge growth in this global massive market. Producing biogas from waste is the biggest expansion right now, and our systems produce an excellent feed source for these biogas operations, allowing a connection from the farm to the energy market. And when we pair our technology with an anaerobic digester, we reduce greenhouse gas emissions from livestock by 82%. We know today's consumer wants to see a more sustainable food chain, and our technology enables farms to meet this consumer demand. Our buyers are millennial farmers looking to address a new engaged market. With 20 years of water treatment experience behind us, my co-founder and I have commercialized a manure treatment application based on our background and have brought together a dedicated team of scientists, engineers, and computer programmers who likely never dreamed they'd one day be manure experts. Our 2020 vision of protein production uses the power of data and machine learning to unlock value trapped in lagoons so we can go lagoon free. Our planet needs to feed 10 billion people by 2050. Globally, our biggest challenge is to start viewing waste as a solution rather than a problem. Data-driven waste recycling is not only important to the future of our planet, it is in fact the only path forward in the future of our planet. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Our audience is eager to know how you plan to scale livestock water recycling. Thank you, that's an excellent question. We will scale our product through a international and global group of dealers that we are starting to work with right now. Part of our Series A raise is to engage in a global sales team and dealership team. Farms generally trust local dealers and local service providers to bring technology to their farms. And so we have found as we have started to build out our dealership network, that that's the best possible way to bring our technology to those farms. We have a dealer set up in California, and we have one set up in the UK and one in the Middle East, and we are expanding this market as we go forward. Amazing work, Karen. Thank you. Next, we have Sarah Jenna from My Intelligent Machines, or MIMS, a Montreal, Quebec-based company that helps life science companies use their big data and AI to maximize food and drug production. Phase three clinical trial. This is the last hurdle before a new treatment can be approved, bringing health benefits to millions of patients and a windfall of profits to large pharma companies. It takes years of research, testing, and clinical validation to get to phase three. Yet, 30% of phase three clinical trial fails, costing the pharma industry nearly $20 billion each year and delaying patient access to the next generation of care. The reason for this failed trial is the fact that people with the same disease react differently to the same treatment. We've known for a very long time what needs to be done to create drugs that pass phase three. And this is unlocking the human puzzle to understand the differences between patients. Thanks to the advance in science and technology, this long lasting goal is becoming a reality. My name is Sarah Jenna, co-founder and CEO of My Intelligent Machines. At MIMS, we develop systems biology software 
to help biopharma companies unlock the human puzzle and develop more efficient treatment. And this is not a theoretical exercise. Despite only launching three years ago, we have already signed $5 million contract with the biopharma and hospitals. MIM software models patients into knowledge graph that could be used for drug discovery. Building this graph and understanding the difference between patients requires the integration of information on patient genome, their clinical and physiological data, on their environment, and on knowledge coming from the literature. To do so, even biggest organizations face five major challenges. They struggle to build multidisciplinary team with expertise in systems biology and AI. They need to acquire knowledge coming from the literature, which is dispersed in hundreds of databases worldwide and mostly in unstructured format. They have to deal with very sensitive and heavy data, which involves computing and security challenges. And they need to make this new discovery process adopted by life scientists without expertise in computer science, who represent 80% of their employees. MIMS software help them resolve these challenges. It provides them with integrated solution for patient modeling, used for patient stratification, target, and biomarker discovery. It brings comprehensive and up-to-date knowledge base aggregating data from structured and unstructured sources. It brings a secure and robust cloud computing infrastructure enabling distributed computing and federated learning. Finally, it does much more than helping adoption by life scientists. It actually amplifies life scientists' abilities in drug discovery by creating a synergy between the expertise of the scientist and the modeling abilities of the machine. MIMS technology capitalizes on 30 years of expertise and more than 30 peer-reviewed publications. I myself, a former Canada research chair in systems biology, my co-founder and chief scientist Abdullah recently received the next Einstein Fellow Prize for his career in bioinformatics and machine learning. And Mikael, our CTO, is an AI specialist who worked with the European Defense and Space Agencies. We discriminate ourselves from digital pharma and bioinformatic AI SaaS companies by the strength of our systems biology approach and by the fact that we are the only true augmented intelligence system in this space. Our solutions are used in Canada and Europe and we are currently signing our first client in the US. Over the past two years, we signed $5 million contracts with eight large clients, including big pharma and hospitals. They use our solution in oncology, autoimmune diseases, and COVID-19. We generated last year almost a million dollar revenue, and five months before the end of our current fiscal year, we have already ensured 110% revenue growth. We, expected our, we expect our revenue growth to reach 150% over the next year. There is a lot of excitement around us. Last week only, we have been selected as one of the six finalists of the French Founder Tour of America competition and by Red Ring as part of the top Android tech company in North America. Based on these successes, we're ready to move to scaling phase. And for that, we're raising $10 million Series A in January to consolidate our leadership in Canada, Europe, and US, and to reach $10 million annual revenue. If you want to participate to the next big transformation of the biopharma industry, please contact us. Thanks, Sarah. What differentiates MIMS from your SaaS competitors? And what is your top value proposition? So the major difference between uh, MIMS and other SaaS uh, companies in our space is really the fact that these SaaS companies uh, have a big strength in AI and bioinformatics, usually they are like weaker on the systems biology part. So the strength of our systems biology and the depth of it is really uh, something that our clients really value a lot. The other thing uh, that uh, they really value is, is the fact that we are creating this synergy between the scientist and the machine. And this makes all the difference. Pharma companies develop expertise in drug discovery for decades. They have life scientists that know deeply the disease. They know how a drug looks like. They know exactly what they were looking for. So our system allows them to capitalize on the expertise of their life scientists. So to capture this expertise and have them educated and leveraged by the power of the machine and its ability to model patients, to so do things that are very complicated in computationally, 
that they don't have expertise on and that they can really rely on to find better targets and better drugs. And that's really where, uh, why our, our clients really um, are, uh, prefer our solutions over other SaaS companies. Thank you, Sarah and the MIMS team. Now, I'd love to introduce Passive, a Nashville, Tennessee-based company using text messages to allow schools and districts to quickly and routinely hear from their community of family and staff. Hi, I'm Shani Dow, the founder of Passive, where we make schools and kids stronger through the power of diverse voices. As a former teacher and the mother of two children, I know how hard it is to create strong schools and strong kids. I created POSSIP so schools and families can tap into the collective strength of a diversity of voices. The reality is the world is more complicated than ever. We're divided and we're disconnected and no one bears the brunt of that more than schools and children. We're seeing right now in the midst of a global pandemic, how schools and children pay a disproportionate cost. This is why POSSIP exists because we can bring together diverse voices and change that. Through the power of listening, we bring together actionable reports, data, and insights, and resources. We make it easier for families to share, for schools and districts to listen, and to translate what schools and districts hear into insights and resources that make them stronger. Here's how POSSIP works. Our partners are schools and districts. Their families get a text prompt as often as weekly in over 100 languages. With less than a minute, a parent can respond and share how their child's week was and what their experiences are. Through that, that goes into our platform that creates an automated report for schools that highlights trend data, quantitative feedback, as well as the direct quotes from parents. We take things from the chaotic way that they currently operate where voices are coming out from many directions and it's hard to hear the diversity of views and voices and we streamline it and make it super easy for schools and districts to hear from families and families to contribute. And we do it using simplifying technology because we know that to hear from the most voices, we have to enable all voices to contribute. And then we help our school and district partners make sense of the noise. They can hear from thousands of families within minutes, and then they can have resources for their school and district based on the needs that are coming from their families. POSSIP specializes in diverse communities. That's why we use an SMS text message routine pulse check that goes out to parents and staff members in over 100 languages and then is translated back to the school when parents respond. The questions that go out to families are intentionally written in a way that any family can understand and where education level is not a barrier to their contributing. Our customer is schools and districts and we create products that meet their needs. We have four different product levels all the way from about $3 per student to $10 per student. And because we have a product that's right for the time, we've seen tremendous growth since our founding in early 2017. Our 2020 revenue to date is over six times that of our 2019 revenue. We've grown to over 300,000 users across over 500 schools in states all the way from Hawaii to Maine. Even in these tough times, over 90% of our customers have remained and stayed with us year over year. Part of that is because what we're doing is unique. Our platform allows our schools and districts to hear from two to 10 times the number of, competitor, the number of parents as our competitors do. And who are our competitors? They tend to be in two categories, either platforms that, that help schools and districts push information out to parents or platforms that conduct surveys about annually or semi-annually, um, but that are only quantitative in nature. That's part of what makes POSSIP different. We're smaller and newer than all of those platforms, but we stand out for the uniqueness of how we gather information and voices that are both quantitative and qualitative, the diversity of voices we're able to gather the speed with which we're able to digest massive amounts of quantitative and qualitative data into actionable reports and our pulse on diverse markets. This is what has enabled us to grow both the number of our accounts and the value of each account. Our revenue has grown 6x from 2019 and we're seeing average monthly revenue of $85,000. And the average, the average revenue from our current customers has grown 150% in addition to the average account size growing over four times. We're growing quickly but thoughtfully to tap the market opportunity. First, we'll start with continuing to tap into school and district customers. From there, we'll grow directly to serving the parents and users that we're getting to know so well through our work with them now. We'll then look into adjacent markets like higher ed that have similar needs or issues that we think we can help solve. 
And finally, we'll use all of the data and learning and insights we've gathered to publish more data and insights. We'll do it with an incredibly powerful team. Folks who have a diversity of experiences like me, who has an experience both as a classroom middle school teacher and as a business school student at Stanford and working at places like Bain & Company, or our tech lead, who was a VP in investment banking before becoming a developer where he worked at places like Vanderbilt University Medical Center, or our operations lead who spent 15 years in finance at Procter & Gamble. Our team has diverse experiences from the Peace Corps to youth pastoring and everything in between, and we are the right team for this time. We're excited for you to join us on, on this journey, and thank you. Awesome presentation, Shawnee. One question for you. As you know, ed tech is notoriously tough. What is unique about POSIP, the market opportunity right now, and or your approach that makes POSIP likely to succeed? Our current global situation is really highlighting what POSIP's mar market opportunity was and the need for POSIP. Parents didn't want to be driving into a school building to be engaged necessarily even before this global pandemic, but this global pandemic has accelerated that. Parents don't necessarily want to send their kids into schools, and so parents are becoming the unit of, of education for their, for their students. And part of what POSIP enables is we enable schools and districts to hear from parents, for those parents and families who are going to continue to have their kids in schools, and for parents and families who are starting to think about other models of learning, we know what's top of mind for them, and so we're able to provide the tools and resources that they need to successfully um, support their kids' learning. Thank you, Shawnee. Up next, we'll hear from YZ, a San Francisco-based startup that develops digital technology to bring digital efficiency into the physical world, supporting consumer products businesses and making them thrive in the new economy. Has this happened to you? You go to a store looking for your favorite product, but you can't find it. Maybe because it is out of stock or misplaced somewhere else, or you did find a product, but it is expired. Your unpleasant customer experience translates into a $1 trillion annual revenue loss for manufacturers and retailers. These companies spend millions of dollars in product development, packaging design, marketing, and distribution. But it is precisely at the point of sale where you and I make purchasing decisions that these companies have less visibility and control. Now, imagine yourself as the sales manager of your favorite brand. Your products are sold worldwide at large retail stores and small local businesses. You don't own these stores and you depend on others to sell your products. How are you going to get data at these stores in order to increase your revenue? For decades, companies have relied on sales representatives counting products. This is a labor intensive task that is slow, is costly, and is prone to errors. Now, what if instead of having your sales rep count products and spend on average 20 minutes for each product category, they can now take a video with any cell phone and magically Instantly, you get data on products and store level. This is precisely what we do at YC. We help companies get real-time data at a very granular level with 98% of precision at a fraction of the cost. Our AI platform enables sales representatives to be more efficient with image recognition technology, providing data about stores, products, prices, and even competing products, and assign tasks to sales representatives based on these new insights at the local level to improve on-shelf availability, ensure store compliance, and increase revenue. Unlike other image recognition technology, YC provides a streamlined user experience with videos instead of photos, and processing that is 40 times faster because of our proprietary models using the advancements in AI. In addition, YC accommodates the needs of multiple consumer product types. Not only we, are we able to process products on shelf, but also in showrooms and sites. I am Min Chen, CEO of YC, a second time founder with 20 years of experience. 
ACMU, UC Berkeley, and Fulbright alumna. My co-founders and I have decades of individual experience building, growing, and managing companies with millions of dollars in revenue. We lead an experienced team of engineers, designers, and business professionals, and we are supported by angel investors from the industries we sell to. We are already post-revenue with six-figure annual contracts and selling in four continents. As an SAP partner, we have also access to 400,000 customers in this network. Earlier this year, we won the Bay of Ocean Initiative and the Coca-Cola Foundation Grant. We were accelerated by NASDAQ Plug and Play, and most recently by Google to advance our AI and machine learning capabilities. At YC, we enable the moment of truth. This is beyond managing inventory or sales data. This is retail execution to ensure that the right product is in the right place at the right time in the right quantity with the right price. Because if you don't see the product you want, you will either settle for the competitor's product, go to another store, or not buy at all. Contact me for a demo if you are in a consumer goods industry. If you are an investor and would like to be informed of our next funding round, send me an email. Thank you. Thanks, Min. Now a question from our viewers. What does your sales process look like and how do you convince large traditional companies in the consumer retail and CPD, CPG industry to invest in YZ's technology? That's a very good question. So we usually start with a meeting where we show a demo, then we do a pilot with several SKUs and stores. Then we go into annual contract for a country or a few countries at a time. Um, we designed our technology and our service taking into account these traditional industries. We not only have a technology that is faster in terms of processing time, but also faster in terms of training time to be able to onboard the thousands of SKUs that all these companies have. But we also integrate seamless, seamlessly with their existing technology, and we also have a standalone system that can work well for those countries that they don't have um, existing solutions. And then we remove any friction point in terms of process, technology, and reputation. The fact that we provide a pilot will help these companies see for themselves how this technology will help their bottom line, what are the adjustments that they might have to do, and how we can also prepare better for when these companies are ready to go live with us. Thank you to the YZ team. Last but not least, I'm thrilled to introduce Rachel from Xenia Technologies. Xenia is a Vancouver, British Columbia based company that aims to be the first clinically proven medical device for chronic snoring and mild OSA. Everyone is familiar with the sound of snoring, but you may not know why it happens. Chronic snoring occurs when the muscles in the upper airway relax and vibrate, creating that familiar sound that disrupts you and your partner's sleep. If your tongue relaxes too much, it can fall back and cause an obstruction, otherwise known as an apnea apopnea event associated with obstructive sleep apnea, which means you periodically stop breathing while you sleep. Sleep deprivation and obstructive sleep apnea can diminish mental capacity and increase your risk for developing heart disease or diabetes. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm co-founder and CEO of Xenia. I'm here today to talk to you about chronic snoring and mild obstructive sleep apnea and how Xenia is conducting clinical trials to develop the new gold standard for treating it. The global chronic snoring and mild OSA market together generates two and a half billion US in annual revenue, even though only 20% of the predicted market is diagnosed. This means the opportunity should be at least five times bigger. The lack of diagnosis can be attributed to limited education, access to diagnosis, and without a good solution, people aren't motivated to go to their doctor. The average snoring aid costs around $100, but people are spending more than that by repeatedly buying ineffective and unproven products while trying to find anything that will work. Xenia will be able to grow this market beyond the current $2.5 billion to create a $34 billion market of Americans who are diagnosed and passionately looking for something to help them sleep. Since the traditional solution of a continuous positive airway pressure device, or CPAP, are not regularly recommended for treating mild OSA or chronic snoring, that only leaves three options. There are mechanical solutions that attempt to adjust the anatomy, like a mandibular advancement device or a tongue stabilizer, but they have moderate adverse effects and low compliance rates. 
In the last several years, new tech-based solutions have become available. They're not clinically proven and physicians do not endorse or prescribe them. Once all of their options have been exhausted, physicians can recommend surgery to remove the excess soft tissue in the upper airway. But after two years, 45% of people relapse and end up snoring just as badly as they did before. Which is why we developed the Zen system. It is a medical device which consists of a wearable unit, mobile app, and consumable adhesive to externally reduce airflow restrictions by treating the underlying cause of chronic snoring and mild OSA. The team scales lie in manufacturing, electrical engineering, biomedical engineering, and clinical validation. Zoe, our director of product development, has over 20 years experience developing medical devices and taking them through the clinical and regulatory process. Dave, our lead engineer, has worked at Misty West and, over, and has over 15 years experience creating novel technology for companies like Intel, Microsoft, and Google. Oliver, my co-founder, he is a mechatronic systems engineer who came from Tesla's Power Research Lab, and my background is in financial product, hardware sales, and the academic side of entrepreneurship. Zenia's advisors and board of directors have several lifetimes with experience in medical devices, sleep medicine, and commercializing healthcare products. Zenia came from research at Simon Fraser University. Since then, we've gone through SOSB's Hex Hardware Accelerator, Johnson & Johnson's J-Labs, and we are thrilled to be a part of the Google Female Founder Accelerator that has helped us fast track our product development. We've spoken with the FDA to clarify our path to market. And in September, we started executing our first multi-center clinical trial with our team of veteran researchers, where we had over 100 people reach out to participate in the first 30 days. Pending FDA authorization, SENS will be available by selling directly to consumers via telemedicine to prescribe. The adhesives and sleep health data are packaged as a monthly replenishment plan, and the device is a one-time sale that's controlled through our mobile app. Telemedicine allows Xenia to access our initial target customers faster, with lower operating costs by removing limitations associated with selling to sleep clinics. This year, Xenia is focused on wrapping up our first clinical trial. Next year, we'll manufacture the second generation of the Zen system and start our final clinical trial for FDA authorization where we'll be on track to submit to the FDA in 2023. To summarize, Xenia has the opportunity to be the gold standard for treating chronic snoring and mild obstructive sleep apnea. Our team has over 45 years experience through working in academia and industry, and we've outlined the fastest way to get to market and are one of the few non-COVID related clinical trials operating with over hundred people reaching out to sign up in the first 30 days. My ask to all of you at home, Xenia is looking for introductions to key opinion leaders in sleep medicine and for introductions to investors for Xenia Series A, which we're anticipating will open around Q2 of next year. Please reach out if you'd like a demo of the Zen system. Thank you so much for watching. One final question from our viewers. Does your solution have to be a prescription or is there an over-the-counter option? Yeah, thanks for the question. So yes, uh, pending FDA market authorization, the Zen system will be a prescription product. The Zen system is a novel medical device that addresses the underlying physiological mechanism behind why people snore, and it should be a prescription. Uh, the indications that Zenia has discussed with the FDA to treat chronic snoring and mild OSA do require a prescription product as well. We did also note that through conducting hundreds of user interviews, that people are passionately looking for something to help reduce their snoring and to make sure that they sleep and feel better. They're tired of purchasing wellness products that don't work and they want their physician involved in the treatment. So post FDA authorization, the Zen system would be available via prescription. And that's a wrap. On behalf of Google and everyone who made this program possible, a tremendous thank you. Thank you to the 12 startups and the amazing women behind them. It has been a true honor and privilege for Jason and I to work with you all. Thank you to the Googlers and partners who generously offered mentorship and support to our founders and for all the work you do for this ecosystem. And lastly, thanks to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in to learn more about these great companies. And one final call to action for our viewers, investors and partners, our founders would love to continue the conversation. Customers, visit their websites, learn more about their awesome tech and their awesome companies. And finally, allies and accomplices, spread the word around Demo Day. Interested in connecting with our founders? Reach out anytime or email us directly. And finally, congratulations. And happy holidays.